Next up, because you, the audience, can't physically be here, I thought a good way of getting you involved was if I ask our guest your questions. This week is the Emmy Award-winning star of last week tonight, the brilliant John Oliver. That's our show! John Oliver is a comedian, actor... Scar, 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 no! ..and multi-Emmy Award-winning host of Last Week Tonight, where he's tackled everything from the Chinese government to the tobacco industry. Jeff the disease lung! And where his piece on Donald Trump became the most watched content on HBO of all time. Even broadcasting from his home hasn't stopped him. This is weird, isn't it? This is definitely weird. John, great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks. Great to be here, Russell. So, these questions, nothing to do with me. I'm not responsible for these questions. We yeah, asked the so audience. You've completely outsourced uh, your job at this point, right? One to of my jobs. People yeah. that watch this show. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. In the in the guise of, oh, this will be fun. We'll do it together. But really, it is fully abstaining responsibility. That's one way of looking. I just at want it. to be clear about what we're about to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. Uh, you're trying to paint me out to be this. Uh, let's call it an Ellen figure, but that <laughs> bullshit won't work. <laughs> I'm a I'm a good guy. If the haircut fits, Russell, yeah, wear it. True, true. Yeah, it's a bad time to look like her. I could really do with her zhuzhing it up a bit. <laughs> right, our first question is on video. Hi, John. My name is Tessa, and I was just wondering, how did it feel to watch Liverpool finally win the Premier League, and how did you celebrate it? It felt absolutely amazing. I'd, I, was, I wasn't emotionally ready for it at all, which I know is absurd, considering how far they were ahead. But it was only... It was like in that last five minutes of the Chelsea game. It suddenly hit me, oh shit, oh shit, they're about to win the league. Then when it happened, I think with the everything, all the horrors that were happening in the world, I, I did kind of expect it not to mean as much to me as it would have otherwise. And mm. the truth is, I think it might have meant more. Yeah. What, watching Klopp afterwards get emotional uh, and leaving the interview because he didn't want to cry on camera, I found absolutely emotionally devastating. But you've always he, been He a made man. me cry, and it's the first time I cried this year, which is crazy for all the terrible things that have been yeah. happening. What really got to me was feeling so happy for them and then watching him kind of short-circuit himself with emotion and walk out of the interview. It was... I, I, it meant so much to me, that. Far, far, far more than I thought it would. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's have another question. What's your favourite cheese? Oh, uh, I'd probably go with a sharp cheddar now, but as a kid, what I liked more than anything else was Edam. And one of the greatest birthday presents I ever had was a whole Edam, whole ball of Edam. It was absolutely amazing, just looking at it, thinking, it's the whole thing. Wow. It was brilliant. It was a great present. How is that a great present, you fucking maniac? Like, I know you're being, you're being wistful. It's a, bit, it's a bit of cheese. I'm talking like, do you remember those Air Jordans? You, you're wrong to think about it. It's, it's not a, just a bit of cheese, is it? It's the whole of something. It's all of a sudden having the whole world at your fingertips, as long as the world encompasses simply Edam cheese. But what did you write on your Christmas list to Santa? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I didn't say Edam cheese, please. Yeah. I think he, he riffed that one. Yeah. I think what I probably said was a bike. What's happened there is your mum and dad, they've panicked and, and they've thought, oh shit, I tell you who we have missed, John. He's a simple sod. Get him that big, the big red one, not the mini baby bell. Tell you the... what, not... if that, it worked. Yeah. I've forgotten a lot of presents that I got. I never forgot that Edam cheese. How old were you? I would have been maybe seven. Fuck me, they should have taken you away. <laughs> you should have gone straight to, <laughs> straight to social services. Wow. Um, next question. Hi, Russell. John. Lungile from South Africa here. Big fan. Excuse the quarantine beard. Question for John. In what way, if any, has doing the show changed the way he views the world? Thanks. First, quarantine beard. Fully excused. And honestly, I would consider keeping that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that beard frames his face very nicely. Yeah, it certainly does. How has making my show changed the way that I view the world? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess there's a bunch of stories that we've looked at that um, that I didn't know much about going into. So I kind of feel probably more, more informed than I would otherwise have been. Because the great luxury is having a research department who can go into huge detail on a subject. So mm -hmm. it's really about learning all the stuff 
in a story so that when you start chipping stuff away, you can know that you're not making a mistake. Mm. We've got another video question. Hi, Russ. Hi, John. Uh, how do you make your cups of tea? I mean, Excellent what, question. I mean, that, There's only <laughs> one, one way I know how. Bag in first. Hot water on top. Give it a swirl. Bag out. Splash of milk. Walk away. <laughs> my my mum was from Liverpool. She, she is, all our time growing up, did not think that it was one tea bag per cup. It was, you should be able to get a second use out of that tea bag. Oh, really? Yeah. So you stretched tea bags and you had cheese for Christmas. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? The more I'm talking about it, the more I'm painting a Dickensian childhood <laughs> that I actually cannot quite live up to. Next question. Why that fucking rat painting? You know what, you know what I'm talking about, just why. Yeah. Do you, I, do, you, do you know what that is? I've seen it. I think we can actually see it here. So that was very, very early on in the shutdown yeah. in America. And so we'd found this video of this art auction decades ago. And it was very, very funny. So then it, it felt like, oh, at that point, you kind of want to see that painting. So we, we put out a, like a large charitable offer uh, with the promise that um, if someone could track that painting down, we would pay it to a local food bank. And they found it. And boy, oh boy, when that thing turned up, there was first like a surge of euphoria that I've not felt for a while of kind of, I can't believe something good has happened in this world. <laughs> then it was thinking, what am I going to do with this shit? <laughs> <laughs> because we've been taping the house with my children in it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we, I tried to keep them out of the room that we'd set up as a studio. Yeah. But my four-year-old did get in there once and say, what is the, what's the rat doing? I thought, Oof, what is the rat doing? Yeah, I mean, that's a... Daddy says, that's a... That's a Short question that really requires a long answer. It's not what the rat is doing, it's what those rats are doing to and with each other, son. Yeah. First, I need to explain to you the concept of KY Jelly. <laughs> so, yeah, that... <laughs> or it was it felt like either that or it was just turning the painting around and saying, don't worry about it. Yeah. And uh, I went with option B. Yeah, but that must have blown his little mind just opening a door in his family house and suddenly there's a TV studio where you do your show. It's a Narnia situation, right? It's the forbidden fruit. Like you're told, don't go through that door. It's like, okay, I'm definitely going through that door. And then he walks in and he can see this like makeshift desk on a camera. And yeah, he, he sat in it for a bit, looked around, got bored and left. I love so, that. So yeah, he, the, the magical Narnia to him held his attention for about 45 seconds. There's you pumping out A-grade satire and your child's like, yeah, 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 dad, What's that rat doing to that rat behind you? What? I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do a bit here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you yeah, talked yeah. a bit. Yeah, sure. Se seems like this is going to be the funniest part of that bit. Though. <laughs> that is true, so, yeah. But this is what I love. So you, you don't. It's so funny. So you do the show in your house, and then you yep. don't have a green room. You don't get to have a couple of drinks. You don't get to hang out with the guys you make the show with, oh. and, and have a little sort of moment of calm. Describe <laughs> what happens when you finish your show, now. When I finish my show now, I press stop, <laughs> feed the files, I then open the door, and then there's two children on the other side of it saying, finally, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, OK. So right, it's just I've been thinking about police brutality a lot, so it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to, now, to now watch Paw Patrol with you and not see some systemic flaws in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. See, there's a, little, there's a little hand at the door now. Well, that is not okay, chilling in any way. What? Hold on a sec. I'll be right out, okay? Yeah, all right. He's it's the he's, li he's literally shaking his backside at me right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's have another question. What's the one British thing you're worried your kids will miss out on growing up in America? Ne negativity? I mean, you're their dad. <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah, you're right. I should I should be able to clip the wings of their optimism. Yeah. Um, at the moment, they, they're pretty happy-go-lucky, but, I don't know, give me, like, two more solid years with them, and they'll probably, their long size will elongate. <laughs> hey, John, let's have another video question. Hey, Russell, hey, John. Um, now that we know having a celebrity as president may not be the best of ideas, um, I was just wondering if you guys could pick two celebrities to put onto the ballot for president and vice president, who would you pick? Okay. First, obviously, we have to deal with the fact that it's an absolutely magnificent 
head of hair. Yep. What he ha is wearing on top of his head is not a world that I can inhabit. Yeah. It's so distracting, I genuinely cannot remember what he just asked. Oh, no, that's right. No, it's actually a self-contradiction. He said, I think we've seen that having celebrities as a political leaders is not a good idea. And then he's repeating the same mistake that society has made over the last half a decade. Yeah. And he said, what celebrity? Well, none. That's the, that is the point. He is... That, that guy's thinking with his hair there. Yeah. <laughs> right, John, what kind of bird do you feel most similar to? Flightless birds. That's, that's, that's what I feel... <laughs> that's what I feel closest to. Birds with wings. So there's, there's a kind of... There's an evolutionary promise that you're going to be able to soar majestically, yeah. but you can't get your fat bird behind off the ground. Yeah. I have to that's, th that's how I feel. A flightless bird. A bit like, you know, worms. Worms must stay, like, when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, there must be a yeah. moment when a worm looks on going, well, that's, that's got to be us. Yeah, what's my future? Yeah. yeah. And it turns right. out... What your future is, it's being cut in half by a, by a shovel. Yeah. Or your, or your mum going, don't worry, we can have sex with ourselves, and then she shows you. Um, wh why has Attenborough never done that? Why is Attenborough never... <laughs> Here we see... Um, he's, wait, he's, he, he's, he's waiting for the last thing that he does. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and it's just... Imagine that. It's like the time. Fi the final it's episode. just going to take out the, the worm episode research for Michelle yeah, to yeah. say. It's or it's time, like... Guys. David, no. Yes. Yes. It's time. Yes. It's time for the ten animals that I find most fuckable. At number ten. And it's just this kind of banana. And then he's replaced by like Danny Dyer or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, oi, oi, that worm just watched himself. <laughs> oi, oi. Press the red. Is that a monkey? <laughs> <laughs> Same diff. Actually not, Danny. Oi, oh. oi, animal! <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. You're probably like me, you've probably been to the zoo a few times and you thought, I like gorillas, but what are they capable of? Well, today, we're gonna fucking find out. I've jammed one I've asked <laughs> multiple times if I can fight a gorilla. They've said no. <laughs> But I tell you what, they seem so angry with me, they're willing to give me a chance. <laughs> exactly. I would They've I... said you should name animals. Bullshit, I've named this one Keith. <laughs> Final VT question. Hi, John. Big fan. Here's a question for you. What would be your death row meal? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> She really enjoyed that. <laughs> it's do you know what I love the most? It's the makeup. Oh, she's put a lot she's put a lot of makeup on for you. For anyone who doesn't know, that was She's very good. That was my mum. Very good because there's a a relish there. Yeah. In don't think of it don't think of it as sad, John, this meal on death row. Don't think about what you've done to put yourself in this situation, and you have put yourself in this situation. <laughs> Let's think about what we'd enjoy the most, shall mm. we? Yeah, what would be <laughs> death row meal? Yeah. I yeah. ask with a sunniness completely at odds with the situation. Yeah, exactly. Now you may have you may have murdered an entire street of people, but for the time being, you've still got taste buds left. So I don't know what your view on the afterlife is, <laughs> but, you know, some people would think you're going to burn in the fires of eternal yeah, hell. Best. So are we doing a pudding? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, they're going to run. Oh, that's them. very good. But, she, but it's a good question. It is. What would you is, have? What's um, your, your death row meal? I'd be torn between going Italian and going Indian. Have a bang bang. Have them both. <laughs> have a chicken madras lasagna. I'll have that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'll have that. I'll have that. Because at least in digesting it, I might actually think about what I've done. Well, this is the interesting thing, because I asked my mum that question years ago. I said, yeah. what would your death row meal be? And my mum said, what have I done? And I said, you killed eight people with a hammer. And she said, oh, Christ, really? And Jenny, we said, I'll, I'll just have toast. <laughs> just because she was just so horrified by what this fictitious version of her had done. She's like, nah, it's just... No, we don't. <laughs> just have toast. Yeah. She's right. She's right. I enjoyed that immensely, my friend. Um, thank you very much for no coming worries. on the show. No worries. Good luck with it all. Thanks. And um, go look after your son. Yeah, I will. All right, I'll see you later, guys. All right, mate, well done. See you later, John. Thanks so much. See you.